and going to keep feeling good about ourselves going into the game. I don't think these guys can afford to take an off week. I remember always back when I was playing, even if you'd been winning a while, or even after a losing streak, the one thing that I'd always want to do is intentionally try to win a few games before a tournament or a big event. And for Cloud9, the worst thing they could do going into regional playoffs is give the other teams a bunch of confidence and demoralize yourselves by losing to them in the regular season. Even if you can kind of hide behind the veil of, oh, we weren't trying our hardest, as a mm -hmm. lot of these teams like to do, you just have to keep playing the way it's been working because they shouldn't worry about losing to North American teams or like giving away strategies because they've clearly demonstrated they can beat them this whole season. So we're going to go for this one. Pretty standard things come in, of course. Ball's first picking that Shen. He's done a very good job with the champion. Hasn't been allowed to pick him for a little while. Yeah. And of course, with Rumble Band away as another courtesy pick. But uh, starting out strong, I think, with the Cloud9 champ select. Yeah. We, we blew over the bands really quickly there mm -hmm. because we were talking about other stuff. But yeah. they're very focused, especially on kind of punishing Skara. Skara has not proved this split that he is able to perform if you ban on specific champions. And it's been one of the big reasons for Dignitas' struggles outside of all the Kiwi Kid deaths we've been talking about. So I like those bans by Cloud9, and it shows to me that they're definitely targeting Scar. And that just has seemed to work well so far. Of course, Dignitas, though, going back to some of their own comfortable picks with a couple of the key junglers gone, though. I guess Nas is still up here. Uh, the Elise being stolen away. Of course, we saw the Zac being banned out, the Ezreal being grabbed up here for Cutie Pie. They're certainly, uh, I mean, Dignitas here are certainly playing champ select pretty well so far as well. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if Meteos does go with Nasus because while it's naturally the thing he likes to pick in the situations when Zac is banned and Nasus, those are his two. So it's either mm -hmm. like banned or picked away from him. But because of the picks Dignitas has already picked in, uh, knowing that Elise is probably a jungler and that Ezreal is probably the AD carry, those are both like very caster spell-based things, whereas Wither on Nasus is going to be very ineffective. So if he picks Nasus later on, as he picks it when he picks his jungler, mm -hmm. it's not going to be specifically to counter an AD carry. It's actually going to be suboptimal in that situation. It'll be more for Cloud9's overall strategy that they just love doing, having lane control and just having his presence in teamfights. So we'll see what they end up going for with that one. Of course, Cloud9 with their next two pickups here with Ash still on the table. They've grabbed up that Zyra. Of course, who's going to steal away Ash when you've already picked up an AD carry? The Cannon coming back into the show yeah. as well. So uh, more champions that Cloud9 loves to run. That just tends to be their, their play style, man. And of course, Cloud9 might be doing some of that lane swapping, but it seems clear to me that that's going to be high on Cannon and then balls on Shen. But we don't actually know if they're going to be lane swapping or not. They've done plenty of these things before. Early in the season, they would do Rise, Cannon, and they just basically guess Whoever where you want to go. Whoever wants to play. Because they're they're cool like that and they can bounce around. Unless they want to be something really sneaky and throw like AD carry cannon, but I think we don't see that very often, so I think we'll skip on that one. But I like this choice here by Dignitas. The yeah, Oriana coming in, another grab here for Skara. But of course the Janna, the counter pick into Cannon, pretty smart. I actually feel like Cloud9 struggles a little bit against Janna, but almost no one has been picking Janna against them this season. Their first loss of the season was against Chouster's Janna when he was disengaging specifically mm -hmm. against Akena for Cloud9. And then there was actually a few games where Cloud9 was using Janna as a contested pick. And then just kind of died away. Yeah. Because there was maybe a little bit more Zara being played. Everyone started tunneling back onto Thresh. But for Dignitas, that is a smart scouting move and a great time to pull it off knowing you're already going into a cannon, and also because Zyra is going to punish you for diving in, so Dignitas is not picking a dive-in team whatsoever. They're very poke-oriented, which is good against that. There's actually a lot of things I like about Janna. Think about the Cloud9 mm -hmm. playstyle, where you push turrets really hard, or we dive you really hard. Not only do you have the Monsoon, the knockback engages, uh, but you've also got the turret protection, the wave through the Howling Gale, the shield and the turret. Like, there's a lot of cool things about Janna I like here, as Cloud9 puts in more engage. Of course they do. Yeah, That's the course. way they play. That's the thing. <laughs> That's why Janna is such a strong pick against them. This will be the first time we get to see Meteos playing EVE, so he does not go for that Nasus. And of all the teams that should understand exactly how to engage with EVE, it's going to be Cloud9. Expect to see EVE coming around the backside of a team and flanking with an Ash Arrow, as opposed to just running straight forward into a team. That is the best way for EVE to go in, because you want EVE's ult to hit bef right before everything else, since Eve's one of the only ultimates in the game that can do zero damage since it's percentage, current health, and yeah. nothing else. So yeah. you want to use it when everyone is at full to initiate fights, which is something Meteos has no problems doing, and I expect them to play it very well. Well, this should be all sorts of fun then, Cloud9 playing their sort of play style. Dignitas actually throwing us for a loop as well and putting Elise into the top lane as nice. they grab Jarvan here for a crumb. So well done by these guys, putting up their little team composition. Dignitas, a lot of blonde champions.
Yes, yeah, surprisingly, <laughs> Dignitas, none of them have blonde hair, but they all decided to go for blonde haired champions. It's envy. Soon enough, Scar is going to go Super Saiyan, and even I'm a cutie pie and just dye his beautiful <laughs> locks blonde. But really, Pull <laughs> I want to talk about the Elise in particular for Dignitas and why I really actually like Dignitas's champ select a lot in this situation. When Kiwi Kid was excelling in the mm -hmm. spring split, a lot of that was on Elise. Yeah. And the fact that he's been struggling lately and they're putting him back onto that champion will give him a lot of opportunities to succeed. And I'm curious to see how he does because it's been a while since the spring split. Not only just time since last played the champion in competitive, but she's been mm -hmm. nerfed a few times since then. She's been nerfed a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, was a little strong. A in surprising the amount. Especially on the 310 patch where there were so many changes to Elise, mm -hmm. but teams are still valuing her extremely highly because her damage wasn't necessarily hit, just the durability of her spider links yeah. and the range of her repel were hit dramatically, or at least the utility that that spell provides. It's very interesting watching the evolution of Elise and also the evolution of the jungle in this 3.10 patch. It was something that, <clears throat> as you mentioned before, that he couldn't rush the Runic Bulwark. Medios talking about. He's got to mm -hmm. sort of reimagine what he does here. and he He's not going to be doing it on Eve. That's the one thing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Eve is a carry jungler, and that's actually something Medios has talked about for a while. I remember even before the 310 patch, when I was talking with Medios, I actually kind of overheard a discussion between him and Lemon Nation, and Medios was saying, well, you can play carry junglers. And then Lemon Nation was like, well, then who's going to build the bulwark? Top lane. I mean, it's like, yeah, exactly. Then Lemon Nation's like, oh, you just need a top laner to build it. But now that that's not necessarily required, mm -hmm. he's free to play the carry junglers because Meteos has always thought that they've been viable. It's just that they were locked into that runic bulwark mm -hmm. and it was restricting their ability to play them. So I want to see his take on carry junglers now that he's picked Eve. This should be all sorts of fun. And for what it's worth, actually, it's another thing we talked about with Cloud9 is are they going to reveal new things at the end of the split when they don't need to win anymore? Well, first time Evelyn, we're going to see a carry jungler here for Medio. So, guys, they've come onto the Rift. They're going to toss fighting for a playoff spot. If they win a game, if they win this game or any of the next ones over this weekend, they're going to have it secured. If they don't win here, they've still got to put themselves, you know, kind of on the line for this one. Cloud9, though, securely in first, going to do what they can here to continue to impress the fans. C9, of course, in blue, dig on red. And even if Dignitas makes the playoffs just based off of Team Coast's struggles this week, it's not a satisfying way to go in to the PAX playoff tournament because yeah. essentially, if they go in on a skid, they could still enter into relegation. They need to pick up some momentum, and what better way than to try to get a win against Cloud9? And, I mean, you think about how they got into this, right? If they come into the playoffs as sixth seed or something, what, they have to fight against number three TSM or, or Curse who are on giant winning streaks? Like, that's not... Not an easy even, thing. No! Like, yeah. <laughs> you came in in a tie for third, you dropped to sixth, you fight one of those third-place tie teams that you couldn't beat the week before is, is a risky proposition. So we get ourselves going into this game. Early ward games have actually come across. I believe I saw a vision ward come down at some point to ward sweep. So mm -hmm. Dignitas protecting their lizard side jungle a little bit. It's actually a funny thing that I'm wondering when teams or if teams are going to try to exploit. Lemon Nation almost never starts games with pink wards. And he specifically tries to ward spots that won't get pink warded away and tries to maintain vision that way. He's not actually a vision denial support early game. Instead, someone who likes to provide vision. And interestingly enough, we, as we talk more about the level 1s and Lemonation, uh, he and Sneaky, twice now today, have actually started up just taking the little mini lizards from one of the big camps and using that yeah. for like 10 gold and like 100 experience to start their lane. Exactly. They did that in the previous game as well. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant if you can get it to work because it actually denies the enemy jungler the level 3 rush that they want since there's been so much experience put back in to those small lizards that are next to the big blue buff that you can see Medios taking right now. And since Crumbs did take the Wolves, he might be able to get level 3 off of this one. He, yeah, he will be. But if he tried to do just the red buff to blue buff to red buff jump, he wouldn't have hit level 3. So good steal. A little, little minor counter jungling by the lanes. I like that a lot. Good adaptation in the 3.10 patch by Cloud9. And we're looking at their lane setups now. So we've got a 2v2 in the top lane, a 1v1 in mid, and a 1v1 in bottom. Everyone is playing their basically standard lane opponents, though maybe not in the same spots in the map. Yeah, the only difference, we got the guys up top, and I want to see what happens in specifically this lane right here with Sneaky and Lemon Nation. Because when their Zyra Ash combination has worked, they spend almost the entire game in that exact position, pushing the enemy right back to their turret and being aggressive. And Janna's not the type of support who can actually bully or 
lane that strong early, which puts emphasis on crumbs to try to make these ganks. And he has snuck around perfectly to get past that tri brush ward and is running right into Lemonation. And he finds him Lemonation down to 300 HP, forced to flash early. The knockup's gonna land on a sneaky double root though from Lemonation. Might keep his teammates alive. More damage than a sneaky down below 300 HP for him. Pretty good gank for crumbs, honestly. Yeah, Dignitas seems like they came very prepared. The Janna pick for one, and then essentially knowing the ward patterns of Cloud9 and the early lane patterns of Cloud9 yeah. so that Crumbs could take that approach. Going through the Baron Pit with his Flag Toss so he could work around and avoid that Tri Brush means they've watched that Ash Zara lane before and got the specific gank path to burn both flashes. And it's so funny too, because he was that one step ahead. Lemonish was coming down to Ward for Crumbs. He had a Ward inventory Great timing. running down to the river and he's like, yeah, you, uh, you found me, buddy. And Cloud9 brush face checking, repeating itself today. Uh, that time though, no triple kill. But Crumbs looking again for a gank somewhere else. And this one doesn't seem as wise because Meteos is in exactly the same spot. And this could actually be a very strong counter gank. Luckily, Crumbs did hit level 4 in that brush, so the experience is equal amongst these guys. Oh, never mind. Meteos oh, wow. is actually level 5. This could be bad, depending on who gets counter ganked. Here we go, the jump in on a Kiwi. Yikes. Oh, he's basically gone right now. First blood while in the air. Crumbs now forced to run away. Blue buff is gone, so the cooldown, he's still waiting for it. Meteos jumping forward for a bit more damage. Actually, to point out, Meteos went Ignite on exactly. the jungle. He killed him fast. That's why there was so much burst, because yep. they both burned Ignite. Even though it seems like it doubled up, Ignite does half of its damage up front and then half over the next five seconds, I believe. Mm -mm. No? Over five seconds? I yes. thought it did up front. It does give you five AP, though. Me? What is wrong with me, Freak? I don't know. It's all right. Anyway. You got one tick, though. He got the one tick. <laughs> and then 5 AP. Well, at least Meteos got it. <laughs> Alright. We're just gonna move on. Yep. That didn't happen, actually. <laughs> it's alright. So, first look going to Cloud9. More aggression, despite being ganked earlier on. That duo lane. Look, look at the minion deficit. 38 to 26. Mm -hmm. Cloud9 got ganked, are winning the lane. Yeah, that's the way they play this lane. And it's... Now Crumbs has to repunish them. It's just because he spent the time going bottom uh, and got hit by that double ignite. <laughs> He's not able to get back into the top lane and actually take a bit of control. Once you burn the flashes, you need to be able to make the return gank. Otherwise, that first gank doesn't mean much and the bullying will continue in the top lane. And speaking of bullying, though, there's one coming in the mid. He's level Meteos. six right now. What? And the ult comes across. Scar has to try to flash away, but here comes Crumbs. Is it going to be enough? High down to 50 HP. It's going to be a trade kill right there. Another ignite burn for this one. Meteos chasing around Crumbs. He's oh, just going. He might get him. Gets cute in the face. Double kill for Meteos. 2-0-1. Carry jungler? I think so. Here he comes right now. We've talked about Meteos' ability to always be in the right place at the right time, but now it's time for him to carry because he has 600 more gold right now than anyone else in the game. <laughs> Junglers usually start the game pretty strong in gold, but specifically when he doesn't have to build aura items, and because he's gotten the two kills and a bunch of lane XP after the kills, plus the enemy jungler, he's potentially going to go crazy here. It looks like he's going to. Level 7 right now, highest in the game. And we're just... And of course, now even more things unlocked for Cloud9. Balls has hit level 6, he's got the stand united as well. And so, there, I feel like there's going to be even more pressure coming across. I know the Twitch submarine is fun, but I feel like mm -hmm. the Evelyn submarine also pretty strong here in the lineup, and we'll see that as the game progresses. Yeah, that's one of the ways that Cloud9 is going to be able to initiate. It'll be Meteos coming in, maybe with Shen, maybe without, but it'll give Balls a good way of entering fights. Mm -hmm. And since he's gotten so much farm so quickly, he can basically threaten just by himself. Then High will flash in to support or just run in very fast as kind of everything will try to file. And that's what Cloud9's going for. And they'll need to kill Patoy almost before he can react with one of those Janna ultimates to try to break everything up. Yep, so here we go. This guy's looking to set up kills. The uh, red buff going to crumbs. All right, so the jungle hasn't been invaded too much by, uh, by Cloud9. At least those buffs are getting mm -hmm. traded back pretty equally. It's just the ganks that have really set these teams apart. It's given Cloud9 a 1500 gold lead, which Definitely does not suck. And now I want to know if Meteos also, to continue this trend, takes away his own blue buff. Because yeah. he's got an he energy mid laner. He will. High, even when High's on a mana champion, he's one of the more likely mid laners to sacrifice blue buff to Meteos. Sp specifically when Meteos plays Nasus because he loves the mana for his Spirit Fire wave clear. 
But I just kind of want to spend a bit of time in Meteos Vision this game to see where he goes next. I'm just looking. 53 farm is competing exactly with Hot. Mm -hmm. Not to mention all the kills and double buffs he's got. And he's just getting more and more lane farm. Because Cloud9 has just done a lane swap, he's able to get this lane up top either. As a jungler, if your team is willing to give you opportunistic lane farm, you can and will outpace the game in experience and gold. And that's what Meteos is doing right now. So then it's on him. You've got to think about... Uh, actually, just to kind of reference the clip that I covered with Cloud9 versus CLG, it was, you know, uh, Cloud9 actually zoned out the major gold holders of Counter Logic Gaming. And right now, actually, the major gold holder is this not is around this dragon fight. Dignitas looks like they might just be sweeping away. They get the dragon pickup. They saw Meteos top, but High is going to engage. He finds Kiwi Kid. Kiwi Kid forced to run away, but Meteos spots him. Another kill picked up. The kill for Dragon still a good thing for Dig. It actually is. So when they saw Meteos up top clearing the wave, even though it was giving Meteos a lot of individual farm and giving Cloud9 a lot of experience across the board, it opened up that window where Dignitas could take a risky dragon. And Dignitas took, Dignitas took the risk, got the dragon. Now it's about whether they will pay for the kill that happened to Kiwi Kid. And Dignitas said that they thought their early game was better than Cloud9's, and if the kills didn't go their way, certainly the decision-making here for Dragons was a nice one. The 2v2 lanes keep matching up, though. I think, it's, I think Cloud9, I'm trying to think of who recalled first and who wanted to get out of that lane, but these guys have been stuck in this matchup forever. Mm -hmm. And now with Cutie Pie actually tying Sneaky here at Minions and catching back up, I gotta think, maybe that's what Dignitas wanted. Cutie Pie's been doing a very good job keeping up with Ezreal. Again, he went for that Brutalizer build. I'm not sure if he's going to be going for a tier next, but that's what he's been doing in the past on Ezreal. And it's actually on Cloud9 to find a way of shutting down Meteos a bit, because Meteos is just hunting for Kiwi Kid. And the dive right there! Kiwi down to 400 HP. Will he repel into the air? He will, but of course is an on-fire Kiwi Kid. Yep. And down he goes. Meteos on a rampage for 0 and 1. More kills going Cloud9's way. 4,100 gold. Ten and a half minutes into the game right now for Meteos. He is exploding this game right now. And Eve doesn't necessarily scale, like hyperscale into the game, but mid-game, Eve can continue to take over. So expect Meteos to just keep up this frantic pace. You can see him running everywhere throughout the jungle. Right now, no matter who Meteos runs into, even if he doesn't have his ultimate, he can win a fight. Yeah, and it's, we're showing it right there. And just doing the math on the gold stat you read out, he's at like 400 gold per minute, which is a uh, rather rare mark for a jungler. Mm -hmm. Anything over 400 in general is really high. So, uh, well played there. High running away though. Keeps finding attention here. Pops his ulti, but gets Shockwave. There's a standing netting. Can he get enough damage in a Scar? Flashing across. Taunt. Nice dodge by Scar, but it won't be enough. Balls finds one. Now Crumb's forced to flash back. The counter gangs just keep coming in for Cloud9. And that was specifically a great play by Balls. He actually waited just long enough so that Dignitas would overcommit. Scar is stuck around a little longer than if Balls had just used that Shen ult right away, and that's what allowed Cloud9 to turn that one around. Beautiful moves Whoa. all across the arrow. Nice little dodge there, Cutie Pie. At least Arcane shifts back out of range of the follow-up Zyber route, so he's gonna be safe. Cooldown's down for Cloud9. That shift stopped the chain that Cloud9 loves to run off with Zara Ash, where they just get one after another and then a third CC coming in. But it doesn't actually stop Dignitas from being pushed back in almost all of their lanes. Exactly. You're seeing the, the characteristic Cloud9 push everywhere. The Hawkshot coming across actually spots that Crumb's waiting in the wings, so Cloud9 won't get too crazy down here. Uh, as they're just sort of... It feels like they're kind of playing between ultimates. Like, the last fight was started by Dignitas, but they had the Balls ulti here. Now with Meteos's uh, Agony's Embrace back, maybe we'll see Cloud9 re-engage. But the funny thing is, they're playing normal, sort of, standard lane setups, and Dragon's gone. And so as the aggressive team, there's not a heck of a lot to fight for. No, not right now. They've cleared out most of the objectives. The main thing that I think is going to happen is... Meteos, by the way. This game's... I'm, I'm focusing on him a little bit because he's level 10 as a jungler already 12 minutes into the game, which is tied for the highest level in the game, very much keeping up with his carry jungle. And this isn't something we have seen in a very long time, and it's what Cloud9 needs to focus on. As long as Meteos keeps this pace up, since they got that 3,000 gold lead, they can continue to take advantages, even if the huge objectives aren't up. Because really, the objective for Cloud9 right now is to just outpace Dignitas and farm. Mm -hmm. And as long as Meteos is running around the map as quickly as he is, and Cloud9 is doing enough counter jungling, the jungle on the map is essentially a very spread out objective that Cloud9 is trying to take. And right now, High is going to be the next piece of that puzzle. Running on down, Crumb's looking in the shadow. Scar nearby Danger. as well. High's flash is not up, but his ulti is. Just walks right away. 
There we go. Red buff picked up right here. That does go to Crumbs, I believe. So, counter jungle avoided. Yeah, there's actually two pink wards in Dignitas' jungle right now. Specifically to catch Meteos as he's trying to maybe flank around the back of teams and also to help protect those Dignitas buffs that Meteos hasn't been able to get his hands on. And oh, the Cloud9 buffs, though, that Meteos does get his hands on. He's still wearing the red and blue buff, fashionably mixing colors right there. And he's going to look for his next move. The ultis are up in the mid lane. Ash Arrow 2. Actually, Sneaky doesn't cross map Ash Arrow very much. No. He doesn't just like that one earlier in the game where we followed it across the whole map. Usually, he'll hawk shot first and then Ash Arrow almost afterwards, right before an initiation. He'll step back a bit and then go. And he finds that they're on to I'm a cutie pie. A lot of damage there. Flash force, but toyalty as well. He's got a flash out too. And there's the re engage. They jump on a cutie pie. The flash forward from like everybody in this lane. Even Sneaky's oh, no. burned his. Scar getting caught out. Medios has burned his ulti for this one. Not quite in range for more hate spikes. Pops the movement one speed more. buff. Is it enough? One more hit to go. Scar with the shield. Medios finds him. Unstoppable. Look where Medios is right now. He doesn't care, and he's going to try to duel until his last breath. Only have 300, 400 HP. Oh, beautiful Ezel catches a stand united, and High shows up. The rest of Cloud9 saying, guys, no man left behind. Keep everyone alive. Find more kills. Eight to one. Getting away with that. Yeah. Feels a little dirty. He should not have been able to go that deep into Dignitas' jungle. Solo the mid laner take on the I'm enemy sorry. jungler from almost no health, eat his ultimate, and then Balls came in to save the day and just allowed Meteos to walk away with an extra with kill, an extra by kill. the way. <laughs> He's now 5-0-2 and, and taking over this game. Yeah, and, and of course, you've got to hand it to the rest of the team making a lot of this happen. As you said, the high, the Balls, those guys showing up as well. 2-0-2, uh, two, two. you've got actually 5,000 gold in the top laner, 5,000 gold in the mid laner. They're outpacing their counterparts certainly very, very well. Even Sneaky, who hasn't been involved in any kills, is at least out farming his compatriot on a cutie pie. So, mm. gotta say, yeah, kind of across the board, even though they didn't even get the dragon themselves, Cloud9 winning everywhere. And a lot of that comes from jungle control. The two turrets are obviously extremely beneficial for that as well. But the overall presence that Cloud9 has on the map due to how threatening Meteos is, is what's allowing them to build up those leads. And as they set up for the last dragon, or the last, the next dragon, the only 16 minutes in. This yeah. game is over in four more minutes. There's <laughs> going to be no more dragons coming. Oh, no. But interestingly, uh, balls won't be there for it. So uh, they're setting yeah. up without the uh, potential for a real numbers advantage here. High, just kind of zoning people out. He's got some plants nearby. Crumb's taking a swipe at stuff. Here's the cute thing, though. Even though... Balls wouldn't be there for the Dragon. If Dignitas wanted to take it with five, they'd be giving up their third outer turret of the game if Kiwi Kid wasn't there to match Balls. And that's actually more detrimental than Dignitas uh, contesting the Dragon. But because, once again, the fear that Meteos has created. Remember the last time Skara tried to roam through his blue jungle? Mm -hmm. Meteos just killed them. So no one on Dignitas is actually willing to venture into that danger zone. And that's why Cloud9 could get that uncontested Dragon. And he basically soloed it. He got some plants for elimination, true support, helping his teammates get the kills right Good there. Job, buddy. But uh, yeah, a lot of objective control still going through. As you said, the jungle being one big spread out objective, Dragon's certainly a big part of that one. All that stuff still in control for Cloud9. The top turret still goes down anyway. High roamed up for it and said, all right, well, I'll push Midas. You hold the lane. Don't lose mid turret. The turret's barely lost any health, so clearly a good call right there. And now three to zero in turrets, one to one in Dragons, and a 7,000 gold lead. Separates Cloud9 uh, well above Dignitas. This is getting a little bit ugly for Dignitas. They're going to have to turn something around very quickly, and it would start with killing Meteos, since he has the largest bounty of anyone. And the dive just comes in here for high drop. Scar down a half HP. Ignite taking down as well. One more Q. No, oh, the sh oh he barely misses with the shockwave. And the re-engage high, low on health. Balls ulti not quite oh. up. He dies before the standard United is available. Now Meteos under a bit of fire, but wants to stay in. Oh, that flash just in time. Keeping him safe from the crystal arrow of Sneaky. And now Ball's actually running away from Kiwi Kid, dashing over the wall. Great reactionary flash there by Crumbs, able to twitch the Ash Arrow, essentially, and get the flash away. But that was actually a pretty good thing for Dick and Toss. Skara took a bad situation, and the team was able to collapse down. They nearly got that kill on Emidios as well, which would have been a way they could swing themselves a little bit back in this game. But since it was just the one kill, and it was against Tai, who had already died, not the best thing. If we could see how exactly this worked out, Two very clutch things. The fact that Scar ulted him backwards, and then he dodged the Q afterwards. Crumbs coming in was just kind of a bonus afterwards, and the Shen ultimate was about two seconds away from being able to come in on that one. 
Check out that flash. Yeah. Last instant. Flash mechanics. Hashtag flash mechanics there for crumbs. Definitely, uh, I don't know, that's worthwhile. I know the video is like, hey man, what's your perfect everything? Man, that I want those double mechanics, what those double mechanics, but still, double could have really used a flash earlier on when he got cocooned. Uh, I think it was by actually Meteos' Elise, so sometimes those reflex, those reflex flashes, rather vital here. So, 19 minutes in, Cloud9, not completely unstoppable. You're seeing some kills go back into Natasha's favor, but certainly this has been a battle of, of a carry jungler and mm -hmm. the lanes that support him here. Cloud9 looks for the next move up for As a jungler, I wish a couple more games would go like this. Yeah. It's always about jungler, you know, let Where's your lanes bulwark? get farmed. Give me my blue buff. Build my aura item. Initiate fights for me. It's like, no, man. Give me my race. Help me once in a while. Give me your lane. That's what I want. <laughs> Take it. There we go. Next, we're going to see Lemonation with like 50 million kills, and then the world will be right. <laughs> yeah. But the mid lane still being swept away. Lemonation still on ward duty, unfortunately. Actually, do you yeah, want to for that sneaky, we'll have to build the side stone. Yes. And then everything will be all Everything's great. Up. I mean, he's got Hawkshot. Do you really need wards when you're no, Ash? Clearly not. Clearly not. You should still build wards. <laughs> <laughs> it actually reminds me of Curse's last game. Edward started the game like 4 0 3 at double GP 10 and built a Crest of the Ancient Golem. That was and pretty we started cool. doing the math and like, how much gold does he have? Like 7,000? And it was just glorious. Edward carried the game, but here we go. Kiwika gonna find almost the first turret kill, but being taunted up by balls. Jumps up into the air and says, all right, I'll get it later. Didn't want to risk getting jumped on too much. Crumbs are right in the wings. They're gonna re-engage. Balls knocked into the air. 2,000 health left on him, and they're gonna start chasing on down, flashing the Cataclysm. We'll let balls escape, but that's a flash down. Not the best thing for him. He's a very strong man right now. He yeah. taunted in right to a counter gank of what's fortunately for him, an 0-3 and an 0-2 members of Dignitas. Meteos just flying in. And the stun land wow. sneaky steals away the kill. Wonderful arrow shot right there. All five members of Cloud9 participated in that kill, thanks to the Stand United. That will let Kiwi can push the top lane, but it rewards Cloud9 with the secondary right-hand side turret. Yeah, once Balls recognized there were two people up top that already tried to kill him, he aided that gank, and that wasn't necessarily the flank even gauge. Just right up the middle. Yeah, and he, because he was so strong, he could brute force it that way and still have it be successful. Yeah. He That's just like it. ran at them. Yeah. There, there was nothing sneaky about that. He was like, yeah, I'm just going to run at you with my face. Uh, you'll get slowed by my ulti and I trust my team from there on. So well played right here. 9-2, to 4-1 to one in turrets. Cloud9 well in control, showing themselves as the number one team. Dignitas, they're still looking for their first win of the weekend here. They've got to make sure they find something. And even... Even if you do lose, you look at their game against Curse, for example, they put on a very, very good showing. Mm -hmm. Dignitas were able to put on close games, and I feel like losing games like that, you feel less bad about it. You're like, well, we could have done these two things, we would have been fine. But Dignitas, I haven't found, I think, a lot of great things to celebrate this game, unfortunately. They've not no. found any openings. Not yet. And even if we think back to the start of this game, just Meteos has gotten the upper hand from the very beginning. So maybe they could look at that and say, okay, we can't let Meteos get that kind of jump on us. We can't let Cloud9 steal two of our little lizards away at red buff, which set Crumbs immediately at a disadvantage to Meteos. A lot of those little things mm -hmm. really matter for early game jungle success, because remember that first gank where Meteos got the kill? He was level five when Crumbs was level four, and they just spiked yep. out Kiwi Kid before he was ready for it. Yeah, Crumbs ganked and burned a flash and forced a recall, but that mm -hmm. was it. And all that time spent was like, okay, your flash is on cooldown, which has not necessarily a lot of value. Oh, this could be big. Just farming here from Meteos, and the jump comes in. Evelyn has been caught. No flash, of course, on him. Got nowhere to go. Shockwave lands down to 300 HP, but the Ashro finds Crumbs again. Where's the pain going to go across? No one's dying in this fight so far. Digging the house running away. And this was actually a 3v4 that Cloud9 is turning. High might come around the back. And will he find the Slicing Maelstrom? Goes on forward. Meteos finds the kill onto Crumbs. And the re engage is there. Oh, High finds no. one. High will find a second soon. No. First, Azonia's away. Scar goes down. Now, High gonna get queued in the face, but that's not gonna be much else. Three for nothing, Cloud9, and a turret. Even though it wasn't as rehearsed as it would seem when we made it in the pregame, that was still the type of team fight Cloud9 likes to make. Since they have a lot of ability to initiate with AoEs, coming around the back with your more squishy members is great. And the taunt landing on oh, a no. Kiwi Kid. He's got nowhere to go. Very squishy, Elise. This is going to be an inhibitor as well. 23 minutes in. There's a dragon if Cloud9 wants it as well, but inhibitor definitely a good prize for that fight. That was about the worst thing that could have happened to Dignitas at this stage in the game. 
I can't think of much worse. Losing your inhibitor after fight like this. Just check out how they hyper-focused Meteos, but because he had that Negatron cloak, it allowed him to live just long enough. There was no Shen ult up, but his Eve ult gave him enough tankiness. And then the turn and the chase that happens from Ash is what's most important. Then, since Patoy wasn't... You know, he'd already burned his stuff. Nothing to answer what High had coming in from the back. And it was pretty much just over from there. High's burst all went on to Patoy and just wiped him out. And yeah, finally Balls Box sends his guys a part of this fight and just steals the kill with his passive. But Toy's ultimate was actually up that entire time, I should correct myself. It's just he got bursted and stunned down so quickly by High, he never even got it off. Yeah, so I was like managing to land on him. Ooh, almost a steal. Kitty Pie's always got really good instincts on, uh, I'm gonna laugh, there's actually a ward there, but generally has really good instincts mm -hmm. on like, I think the buff's going down right now. We've seen a couple steals from him and a couple of near misses. Even though this isn't the best time to bring it up since Dignitas is getting a little bit dominated by Cloud9. Yeah. Everyone on Dignitas does talk about I'm a Cutie Pie's amazing game instincts. And a lot of their post-game or even mid-game strategy re revolves around little things I'm a Cutie Pie says because even when they're losing by large amounts of gold, he's able to calculate very well exactly what the team could try to do to turn the game around. But Crumb's gonna get caught out right here. High positioning himself to catch him after the standard jump. And Medio still, though, on the chase to Kibikit. Kibikit not this having the best rude. game. Oh, and for the kill. <laughs> Can't even finish casting the dunk right there. Medio's walking oh, away with no. one. High getting the other. And now the turret's pretty much open. Balls, you need minions to make that happen. Mid gonna walk away. Dunk. Medios finishes yeah. him off with a hate spike. This has not been Crumb's game. It was a very rude hate spike. Yes. And here we go, without minions, Balls defying me every step of the way, saying we want this turret. Factor bonus falls off, finally gets some minions. All right, there we go. Turret's gonna go down, making that seven to one right here for Cloud9, 15 to two in kills. Smearing the kill score, basically. And we'll see, they're gonna recall back, get themselves some health bars. I wouldn't even be surprised to see Baron just cuz. Yeah, it's strange, Cloud9's not generally a team that will go for the Barons in really quick games like this. They're teams that, when they know they have huge leads, They'd rather just continue to dive and finish off. And because Cloud9 has already gotten down that middle inhibitor, they can use that entrance point into Dignitas' base to pressure down the other inhibitors. Or if Dignitas continues to walk out like this, Stinky can just train people down, get them low, and then push after. Unfortunately, though, not too much blood in his eyes. Realize, you know, there's like DP4 here. There's a lot of dudes missing from the minimap. They might come gank me, so didn't chase down crumbs despite not having escapes. So good read, though. There were Dignitas members coming to help their friend. So, but the rest of the Cloud9, they're grooving back up. They've got health bars. Superman yeah. is flooding in the mid lane. Keep pushing. Screw it. And I'm not sure how Cloud9 is going to play this. I, I would expect Eve or Kennen to come in through the middle and then flank around the back, but there's a chance. We've seen their brute force ganks or just brute force pushes before, they might just go straight up the mid lane, try to get an arrow on Amicutie Pie and push. I wonder how Dignitas is going to defend this because they are so woefully far behind in golden items right now. This is a very difficult turret to hold. And right now they're just trying to wave clear with it. Cutie Pie, the uh, Iceborne Gauntlet is done. He's got some AoE. Scar is able to do a little bit as well. But Toy's got shields. Maybe they have that miracle defense. And look at the pink ward coming down. They, uh, Just as you said it, right? The Evelyn flank might be coming in. Mm -hmm. The vision ward to help spot that. Maybe it's enough yeah. to let Dignitas disengage, as Cloud9 haven't yet started the battle. We heard NK Inc. talking, since he was the most prolific jungle Eve in the LCS, about how teams counter Eve, and it's pink warding behind you. It might be a little too late for that now, because even just him standing there is enough to put Dignitas back, but it's going to at least give them a bit more advanced warning. It's like it's putting sonar down for the summary. Yeah. <laughs> the good toss have equipped themselves with sonar. Will it be enough though? Because it threats more than the submarine, unfortunately. There's aircraft carriers and all kinds of stuff in Cloud9. I suppose it would be airplanes for Cloud9. Well, here they go. Good Jonal though stops the submarine. The sonar helps right there. Cloud9 trying to brute force in anyway. Turret goes down. The engage coming back on in, but there's a shockwave. Lands on a three. Is there enough engage backwards though? Boss already taken down one kill. That's crumbs dropping. They've got control of the inhibitor, that's going down as well. Dignitas just hasn't had time to accumulate damage. You can just see across the board, I'm a cutie buys builds nowhere close. Scar is the only one with any kind of punch. And he landed the shockwave on three. It barely tickled Cloud9. And it looks like Cloud9 are gonna use that to push the rest of the way through. Root onto Scar. Last turret dropping. Gain is low in health bars, and now the Nexus is open. Ult comes in for high. Looking for some damage. Dropping a bit low in this one. Actually, oh. Scar oh. explodes him. High losing some KDA in what would have otherwise been. A more uh, succinct game. Now, Ball's in rough shape. Actually, Dignitas 
might be holding on to this one. Double kill here for Skara, and they're pushing C9 out of their base. Their middle inhibitor has respawned. Kiwik is not even done. Looks for Lemonation. Can he land the cocoon? Down to half HP, lands it. And the rest of the kill. Yeah, that's that's probably a kill. Kiwi Kid yeah. finding one for himself. Dignitas holds. They, they did hold for now. 11 turrets to one might be a bit much. I think that's good effort by Dignitas pushing them back, and you could tell some of Cloud9. If all of them would have just committed to hitting the Nexus, I think they could have ended the game. But instead, they decided to kind of bail out a little bit. Meteos has had enough tr struggle with his KDA this mm -hmm. week where he had that 0-3 game. He's got to protect it. This is his <laughs> carry Eve game. This is his time right now. I expect Cloud9 to come right back and try to finish. He's looking for the double digits. If you, if you combine all the games together, you've got to get at least, what, 30 kills and assists throughout the weekend to make up for that. So uh, he, he's going for it here. He's starting with 13. Making a score climb on up right here. Of course, the buff's going to be contested once more. Uh, contested, taken. In cloud Nine's own jungle, Media's continuing to wear the blue buff here. Wearing that nice fashionable golem to go with his nice red dress and blue skin. And hmm. they're looking at Baron. I, as you said, they don't really need to do it. They could just go for the uh, turretless inhibitors to close the game out. Yeah, Jarvan is pretty good at stealing. And it would take actually a lot of risk by Dignitas to even think about stealing Baron but specifically because there's not even turrets protecting the Dignitas Nexus. I feel like Cloud9 is just not going to waste time here and hopefully just go in for another fight and then maybe try to end the game because there is no buildings mm -hmm. left to protect anything from Dignitas. So High is going to just kind of do the rest of his homework. He's going to steal away the, the uh, Dignitas blue buff. Meteor's going to steal away the Dignitas red buff. That's pretty much everything on the jungle you could take that would help you fight for this battle. And I'm mean, keep actually just burned his ulti to clear out some of the top lane minions. So it's one less ability available here for Dignitas. Cloud9 are grouping up. Looks like five towards mid with balls a little bit towards the top side. Maybe he'll split. Yeah, it's a matter of are they going to try to flank around the side again? The last fight, while it did give them almost the whole base, was pretty well repelled by Patoy's Monsoon. Mm -hmm. I do just think, though, due to the monstrous gold lead and the 11 turrets to one, this is just going to be a clean initiation from Cloud9, as we've always seen, and potentially a victory. And you know, to answer the question from a while ago of who builds the Aegis, it's Lemonation. He got enough gold from the nice. global objectives. Eleven turrets will do that for you. He's built the Aegis for the team, Ruby Sight Stone, all that fun stuff as well. So, n didn't even have to be boss. He got to go around to his I actually feel like that's exactly what he should build right now. It's Aegis has more stats than ever pushed towards the magic resist aura and less about the individual. So of anyone to build that, it's naturally the support if they can get the gold flow to do so. And just the split push though alone is enough to let Balls take away the top lane inhibitor. So much pressure in mid allows him to grab this one. Of course, the mid lane one going down soon as well. Crumbs might look to engage, gets the ball into his back. Not quite Rita, but there's the Ashro. Crumbs going to go down. Medio steals that one away. Goes legendary at 8-0 and 6, and now comes the push into the Nexus. And I don't even know if Dignitas can hold this one out. This could just get auto-attacked down. This has been such a dominating performance by Meteos and Cloud9. But Shockwave hits three. One kill coming across. True Shot Barrage as well. Monsoon keeps Skara alive. No, it doesn't. Ball takes the kill on down. Two for one so far in this fight. And that'll be enough for the Nexus. Congratulations to Cloud9. Taking a very convincing win in 31 minutes. And Dignitas yeah. will have to look for their first win of the week. Meteos definitely put on his carry pants for that one. From the start of the game all the way through. Ends up competing with all the soul laners in gold at the end of that game. You know, I know Double has said 310 was the rise of COG and the fall of Cloud9. But Cloud9 has something to say about that. Yeah, it seems like there's a good updraft lifting them even higher. Just to point out the stat, Meteos 11.4 thousand. High was at 11.7. Mm -hmm. Sneaky at 12.6. Balls at 12 flat. So within 600 to 1200 gold of all the carry laners. Yeah, it seems like you can get equal gold flow from the jungle. Yeah, that's exciting to see as a jungler personally. But yeah. for Dignitas, they still need to worry.